You're listening to the KB Podcast Network. You're listening to Supernatural Living with your host, Beth Packard. Today on the show, I have an amazing woman of God with me. Her name is Jordan Parkinson, and we are going to, we have a list of questions that we compiled from our listeners, and we are going to address some of those questions with you today. And this is probably going to be a several part series because we have lots to share with you and lots on our heart that God is just wanting us to release over all of you listeners and over the bride of Christ. And we're so excited to get started. I am going to let Jordan introduce herself and just tell a little bit about her and her husband and the ministry that they have so that you are familiar with her. And then we're going to just jump right into these questions. It's going to be awesome. So here is Jordan. Hi, thank you so much for having me on your podcast, Beth. Well, my name is Jordan Parkinson. Uh, My husband, Alex, and I live in Nashville, Tennessee. We just moved there, and we're expecting our first baby this September, so we're excited about that. But we have a ministry called Mirror Image Ministries, and we travel the world. We preach the gospel of Jesus. We see God touch people in signs, wonders, miracles, transformation, power. And that's what we love to do. And even this May, we're going to Thailand. And that's our second mission trip with our ministry. And so. awesome! These guys are so amazing. They've been here this last weekend. They were here for. Uh, meetings here at our church. And I'm just so blessed, so excited that Jordan sat down with us today to bring you guys just some kingdom stuff about women. We had so much feedback and so many people asking questions. We're just going to jump into it. And I hope that you are blessed by this. If you are a woman in ministry or you know someone who is, if your wife, um, if you're a, a man listening and your wife wants to be empowered in this area. Would you please share this broadcast and just let more women hear this more women and men actually, and just be blessed by what is about to happen right now. As we get started, I just want to share both uh, Jordan and I, we're very new to this. Like we have not been in ministry for many, many years. We are not super seasoned in this, but we really feel like God wants us to share the journey that we're on and where we're at and just to help encourage other women in this place that we're at. And so I'm going to start with a question um, from one of the listeners about the very beginning, like back in the very beginning in Genesis chapter two. And the question read, how do you view your role as helper to your minister husbands as in Genesis chapter two? And so I've studied that out and I've really done a lot of teaching my or learning myself because I wanted a revelation of what it looks like for women to be in ministry. When we first moved to Winfield almost four years ago, I remember being really freaked out that there was a woman pastor at a church down the street from us. And everything that I had ever known, you know, was like that women, you know, they were, it's okay for women to um, lead Bible studies or women's ministry, but like to be up and be the head and to be the pastor and that position in the church was not right. And I, I believe that society teaches us that, that the church is a, as a body, um, believes a lot of that. And so I really went deep with the Holy Spirit and just sought that out for myself in certain streams. I know that it's okay. And so I'm like, well, why is it okay in certain streams of the faith and not in others? And that was so confusing to me. And 
I just, I had to know for myself. And so this is our journey that we're on. Both Jordan and I were, we're on a journey. It started in different places and it's going, you know, we both have different visions for our ministries with our husbands. And so like, we both have our unique voices and our unique personalities, and we do not claim to have it all together. We are just being vulnerable and sharing our heart with you guys. So what I would view my role as a helper to my husband it looks like lots of things. We have children. Um, we homeschool. I work from home. All of those things are ways that I help my husband in the ministry that are behind the scenes. Um, uh, another question was, what is your visible role in ministry with your husband? And I think, you know, there are many ways that I am visible in that I do teach. I just finished a Bible study with some women, but also I a year, about a year, a little over a year ago, we had a minister come in, a guest minister come in, and he shared with us that uh, I, I really needed to be pushed out in front and that people needed to hear what the Lord was speaking through me. And they wanted to hear that. And he gave my husband permission for me to do that. And Aaron gave me permission in turn to do that. And as he did that, it was terrifying. I was so scared, like to get up and speak in front of people because I was still working through some of those things, you know, the, from the past. And, and as I stepped up and I, I took that first step of faith into what it looks like to be an actual woman, a woman in visible ministry, I had a lot of stuff coming against me in the spirit realm, but also I fought through a lot of that stuff and I just went with it because I believe that the Lord had called me to do that. And as I've done it, it has led to many, many things. It's led to me being able to break through so much religious bondage, helping me break out of like cages that I had felt trapped in. And, and I think what is so important is that in the Bible, when it talks about in chapter two, Genesis chapter two, I'm going to pull it up and just read the scripture Uh, says in verse 21, it says, so the Lord God caused the man to fall asleep, fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with the flesh. Then the Lord made the Lord God made a woman from that rib that he had taken out of the man and he brought her to the man and he said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh, flesh, <laughs> she shall be called woman for she was taken out of man. And I actually remember my dad, he married Aaron and I, and he read this scripture over us as we got married. And I had no clue what he was talking about. Like, yes, I had heard it from the Bible, but I did not understand what that meant. And as we have moved into this place of ministry and us working and doing ministry together, like that's becoming more of a revelation to me. And I know there's more to be unpacked, but what I see that as is, is I am his helper. I've been called to be his helper. But when God took the took woman out of man, he he didn't take her out of his head, the a part of him out of his head or his feet, but he took him he took her, excuse me, out of his rib. And to me, that's be, that that says that like as we as women come up beside Adam, we're to be beside him and we're going to walk with him and we're to be next to our husbands doing the work of the ministry and we're to be his helper in any way that we can. And I find a lot of times that as I help Aaron, he also turns around and helps me back in other ways. And that's so encouraging. Like when he pushed me to step into my destiny, he was helping me and we became each other's helpers. And that has nothing to do with, you know, I, I'm still submitting to him, but we are helping one another. We were created to help one another. And I just think that that's so important. And I know, um, it's just, it's just awesome to know that we can be beside our husbands doing this right. and still be submitted to the Lord in what he's called us to do. Right. I think that that revelation is awesome about being the, the man's rib, because as, as a man's helper, you're talking about being beside him, but it also is like his rib is kind of under 
his arm, you know, his protection. And a man can be a safe place for a woman and a woman can be a helper for her, her husband. And in terms of ministry, that's kind of how I think it should be is that um, we help and we support and we strengthen our husband, but our husband also gives us that confidence to step into what we're called to do, whether it be a voice or whatever God is saying for you to do, because we all have our own separate callings. We have our own destiny and it's, it's a cool dynamic learning, like the, the team aspect about it. Like when you're doing it with your husband, it's, it's hard sometimes it's, um, a growing thing. You get to learn each other and you get to help each other grow in that. But as you were talking about that, that made me think of how like it's, it is mutual, you know, it is, um, strengthening iron, sharpening iron mutually, you know? And one question someone asked was, what is one word for your, from your husband that he's given you to press through? And I was thinking about that and I don't have a lot of like prophetic words or whatever, but there was one thing that I thought of um, when thinking about that question was when my husband and I go places and he introduces me, he goes out of his way to make sure people know that he says, my wife is not my tag along. She is my go along. We go together in the gospel. We go as a team, you know, and that's something that has really helped me be confident in my calling alongside Alex because there are times, especially in ministry, where women may feel like they don't they don't have an important part in the ministry. And I'm sure men feel that way too if they their wife has a strong personality. But like there are times where I feel like, do I really play a part with this team? because my husband is so amazing, but you know, like that's something that has really comforted me and given me a confidence in, um, in our calling together, you know, that's so, that's so awesome. I love it. I love it. I think just hearing that, um, Jordan and I've been talking like throughout the week, just about like how being vulnerable and sharing what is going on in us so helps other people know, you know what, just because we are in ministry already does not mean that we have it all together holy cow, we like seriously are learning things every day. Like it is a learning experience. And so I think that the the most important thing, the most empowering thing is that we are brave enough and courageous enough to just speak up about it because so many people feel like they don't have that voice and that they can't share not just the, the great things, but even the struggles. And so I think that's why we got so many questions. Like there were so many questions to like what, what women in ministry look like. And I love that. I totally love it because lots of people care about this. They want to know. And I was thinking as you were sharing, like, I'm just curious, like for you, Jordan, like what did you, one of the questions was, was like, what do you feel like your calling is? Or what have you always wanted to do with your life? Like what has God put on you since like you were a little kid? Yeah. Um, well, when I was little, I wanted to do everything. I wanted to be a singer. I wanted to be an actress. When I was doing um, sports in high school, I was like, I want to be a professional volleyball player when I grow up. And um, I, I just wanted to do whatever. And when I was 15 is when I went on my first mission trip. And we went to Los Angeles. We fed the poor. We uh, went, even went on Skid Row and and prayed for the homeless. And that trip marked my life because I remember saying, "I want to be a missionary when I grow up." Wow. And that's kind of like when the Lord kind of marked me for ministry. And I didn't know what that looked like. I just knew I wanted to love people the rest of my life. I knew I wanted to help. And and then I went to ministry school when I was eighteen. And I learned that God is a powerful God. He He's a powerful God who loves people. He loves to heal people. He loves to to um, encounter people. And it brought a whole new dynamic to the calling that God has called me to do. And and so in the years that I was in ministry school, I was like, I want to be a preacher. I want to go to the nations. I want to be a missionary. And I want to travel. And I want to tell people about Jesus all of my life, which is amazing. And that's what I'm doing now. 
Um, and I even remember a funny story is Alex, some of you don't know that I met Alex in ministry school. When I was 18, I had braces. Alex was 20 and he had a red mohawk, a small one. <laughs> and we were, we were all best friends and we would just love the Lord. We're hungry for him. And I remember saying to like my friends and Alex, one day we're going to preach together. We're going to have conferences wow. together and we're going to travel the world together. And, um, we weren't dating at the time. We were just friends. But since we started, um, since we got married, I remember thinking about that, how we are doing it together and it's not what I even expected, but it's kind of, it's a kind of funny story that I like to tell that we're doing what we're called to do together. And that, that when we were friends, that's what I had said. I was, we're going to preach together one day. I love that. That is so cute. I, I especially love the red mohawk. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have to tease okay, Alex a little bit about that. Um, no, that is so good. I, this is what I think is so amazing about different women's stories is that Jordan's known like she had that encounter when she was 15. God encountered her and shifted her to like missions and being so mission minded. And I remember as a kid, I always was so in just I was so interested in the world and like travel. And I, I had that in my heart when I was young and I, at some point, like the world came in and, and kind of stole my innocence and, and led me astray and made me believe that those things weren't possible anymore. And I remember when missionaries would come to our church, I would be so excited about what they were doing. But there was something in me that said, you know what? You can't ever do that, though, Beth. Like, that's not for you. You may think that sounds great, but that's not for you. And you're never going to be able to do that. And there was such a fear that came in during those times that I just kind of stuffed it down deep. I stuffed it down and thought, you know, that's not for me. Okay, well, and I listened to the voice, which now I can look at it and I can see that it was the enemy and he was coming and he was stealing things. He was stealing the vision and the calling that God had on my life. And I just, I just succumbed to it. And so I, I walked in such a fear of just leaving even the United States and leaving the country, you know, traveling in general and now I can look at it now that I've walked through that and I have pushed through that fear and I've come to see that that is actually where God has called me. Aaron especially feels called into the nations and to just, you know, a lot of the same vision that you and Alex have Jordan and, and, uh, I look at it and while my heart is still there and we went to Kenya this last fall and it was so powerful and so amazing and part of me just came alive like what my heart really burns for and longs for is helping people right here in the everyday like now where they're locked in fear yeah. and they're scared of their destiny and their calling like that is where I'm at right now and I'm focused on that because I feel like um, I, f I feel like in order for me to fulfill my destiny and what God's called me to, like he let me go through that for a, for a process so that I could help others through it. Yeah. And so right now, like while Aaron feels so called into the nations and he's going to Malawi next month and he's going to Pakistan and he's, he's going on all these trips and, and he, he's just, his heart truly is in the nations. Like mine's right here in Winfield It's right here to help the oppressed and to help those who are so brokenhearted and who can't dream and can't have like the fulfillment of their destiny come to life without help. Like that's where I feel I'm at right now. And so like, like, I love how it just turns and like what I used to want is still there, but it's yeah. like, I want to help other people and I want to take them along with me on that journey. Like, I don't want to go into the nations while I know that my friends are here, like feeling oppressed and suppressed and they don't have that freedom. And so right. I love that, that it's just like a, a catch 10 kind of thing where like what I thought I was going to be doing, I'm, I probably will one day, but like right now my heart's here right. doing something completely different because I want people set free. Right. And that's cool too, because I feel like as we grow in the Lord and as he sets us free, as we 
walk through the process, the Lord expands your 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 destiny and your calling and what your the people you're called to, you know. And yeah. and as for me, I I had a vision of being a missionary. And then when I, when I got a revelation of him, it's like my, my vision expanded, you know, and I love that you're talking about setting the captive free, you know, mm-hmm. and it's for freedom that Christ has set us free, yeah. you know? And so even for those listening that you may be going through a process with the Lord where he's freeing you, but it's also a defining moment of your calling in him right. because you, what God sets you free from, he's going to use you to set people free, you know, and that's what Beth is talking about that, that what God has done in me, I can't help but share that, you know, I can't help but, but pray for people to be free from the same thing I was bound, you know? Yeah. I love it. Yes. And we're getting all excited and (laughs) amped up. I can just feel it. I can just feel the presence of the Lord in here as we're sharing. And I, I love that. That's really what we were hoping would happen. We have our list of questions, but we were really just hoping that the Holy Spirit would crash in and just help us and, and empower us to empower you guys, you know? And so like everything that we do, like even just before this podcast, I just feel like to share this, like we had a moment like we just sat down and we we prayed together that you know the lord would just speak through us and that he would give us boldness and courage because it's not easy it's really not easy pioneering something that not very many people have done before us it's when when i look at ministers out there like oftentimes one or the other is in the visible light mm-hmm. and one of the questions was uh let me turn and look at this discuss the importance of women in a visible role in ministry. And we were kind of sharing our heart on this earlier, but like, what's that look like in order? A lot of times in order for the woman to be visible, like the the husband has to be helping out with things in the background. And I know for me, like, so we have a revival center here and I get up just to give you an idea of what this looks like for us, because we both are visible in our ministry. So I get up and I introduce and I welcome people and I have a voice and I have, you know, I'm with a mic and I'm, I'm getting to do that. But then as soon as Aaron comes in and he starts ministering and preaching, like I take the kids back into the back into the ministry. And so then I'm not visible, but we work together. Like we are fulfilling like together we are complete and we are being able to fulfill what God's called us to. Then during the week, you know, I've got my podcast and I've got Bible studies and I've got other things where the Lord is using me and he's giving me a voice to reach and mother people and to just change, change our city. But in order for me to be able to do that, Aaron has to watch the kids and he's got to be there and he's got to help out with that part of it. And so when you have a family involved, it truly takes both sides giving and accepting the help and, and going back and forth. And so it doesn't always look like, um, grandma's got the kids every night of the week and husband or wife are both up on the platform preaching. Like that's not always what it's going to look like. In fact, like I don't even have grandparents close by. And so I don't have that right now. And so I know, Jordan, as you guys add a baby into the mix coming soon, your ministry is going to look different. And I'm guessing you're going to be with the baby a lot and it's going to look different, but you're still going to have a voice. And I believe that the Lord will show you during that time um, a different season. Um, Actually, I just keep kind of like going into the next question as I'm talking, like someone asked, like, how do you deal with... um, how do you accept or grow into aging? And for me, that talks more about like the different seasons that we're in. Mm -hmm. And like I was sharing with Jordan, you know, when my babies were small, like I would never have dreamed of trying to do a podcast or teaching classes with my, I have a business that I work from home and like, I would never dream of doing that. Like I couldn't have done that. I wouldn't have had the ability to do that at that time. And so that was a season where I was home with the kids and Aaron was doing his thing, you know, and I was, I was supporting him in the background, but now we've come into a season where our kids are older and they're sustainable. They can take care of themselves. And so I can have more of a visible role. And so I guess with that whole aging thing, like every season 
just looks different. And we have to be willing to change with those changing seasons and not feel um, like we're less than or that we're not important during those times because you raising, you you know, as you, I'm just going to encourage you and edify you as you get ready to have a baby, what you do for that baby and the care that you give to that baby is so important. And only you can do that. You know, your husband can't feed the baby and take care of and nurture in the same way that you can. And so that is going to become your main responsibility and the biggest ministry that you have in your life. And we have to just embrace that. Like, I love my children and I want like I'll catch myself like caring about just the littlest things. And like this morning I was crying because I couldn't do for our youngest daughter what she needed from me. I just couldn't physically do it. And my heart is to minister to them and to give them what they need at all times. And so I don't know, just different seasons just bring along different things. Do you want to add anything to that? Have you seen that in your life um, mm-hmm. not really. No, not yet. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah. And you will, it's coming. It's coming like very soon as you <laughs> become a mom and it's going to be so exciting to see what that looks like traveling. They, you know, as a traveling m- ministry. Yeah. That's what I see as her s- with a baby strapped to her. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. This has been so much fun. We are going to, Jordan and I are going to try sitting down again and going through some of the uh, questions that are still on our list, but we are going to wrap it up for now and for today. And we just want to bless you guys and just declare over you that you are more than enough. You are empowered. We are empowering you and we are just calling you forth into your destiny to step into your destiny, to seek out what God has for you. And, and don't be scared, push through that fear and just step into your destiny. We just love you guys. We want to bless you and just thank you for sharing the podcast and sharing with whomever you think would really be uh, benefited by this. Look for our next episode next week and we look forward to hearing back from you. Please continue to send in any questions you have or comments. Please rate, review, and subscribe on the platform that you're on and help us get this into the ears of more listeners. Be blessed, friends.